Now the question is what should the optimum value of k be right and let us look at uh, this uh, two examples right. So, this is the sequence which has been generated so far she said I never and now you pass this I keep drawing this diagram again and again because I want it to register she said never all of this has been passed to the network and now it has generated probability distribution over the entire vocabulary ok. Now, the question that we are trying to answer is what is the optimum value of so it has and I am taking two examples together one was she said I never let us look at another example I ate the pizza while it was still something ok. In the first case this is what the distribution looks like and in the second case the distribution looks like this ok. You see any difference between these two distributions? Yeah, in the second case it is a very peaky distribution right and most of the probability mass is on the word hot. Now, if you take top 5 sampling here then you have a problem because it is possible that you are going to generate a token which had actually a very low probability. But in this case if you do top 5 sampling then it still looks ok because all of these are almost closer to each other right it is almost like a flat distribution this is a very peaky distribution. So, now depending on the distribution the value of k may either be good or bad right for this phi looks like a bad option for this phi looks like an ok option does that make sense right. So, if you have a slightly flatter distribution at the beginning that means you are not distinguishing between these phi tokens much in terms of probability then having a larger value of k is ok. But if you have a very peaky distribution at the beginning then there is a clear difference between the phi tokens in terms of their probability and hence having a larger value of, of uh, k does not seem to be good correct ok. So, now how do we choose the value of k and that will lead us to another decoding strategy but let me just delve on this a bit more. Yeah. So, if we fix the value of k is equal to phi here then there were a few other tokens which also looked like of the same probability right as the fifth token and we are missing out on those. Whereas, in this case we are already in trouble because our fifth guy itself looks like a very low probability token right. So, that is the distinction being uh, highlighted here. Yeah. If it is a peaky distribution we might end up creating meaningless sentences because the fifth token may be a very low, low probability token and hence lead to meaningless sentences right. So, now what is the solution what would you do now? So, one is known as uh, low temperature sampling. So, let us see what this means right. So, now I have set the temperature equal to 1 which is the default value this is what my distribution looked like ok. Let me just show you the formula. So, now our normal uh, softmax equation looks like this where t is equal to 1 right. If I set t equal to 1 what I get is a normal softmax equation yes. If I increase t what happens? So, when I put t equal to 1 I got a distribution which looks like this. Now, if I increase t what do you think will happen? Hmm? Ok. So, let us see what happens when we increase t. The distribution becomes flatter ok. I will go back to t equal to 1. Okay, now, what do you think will happen if I decrease t? Distribution becomes t. Does that make sense? Right? You can substitute t here. Right? So, if you are, what is happening here? X e exp of say u1 and my t is 0.1. Right? So this becomes u divided by 0.1. Okay? Which means I am multiplying this by 10. Right? Now a value which is already high is getting multiplied by 10. So, it is going to blow up further because you also have an exponent there right. So, values which are already bigger will become even more bigger. So, the distribution will become peaky. If you have a peaky distribution then you will have less variety. If you have a flat distribution then you will have more variety right. So, that is one thing that you could do. If you have a higher temperature it will make the distribution flatter and then you will have more tokens which are very close to each other in terms of probability and all of them would become equally likely. So, you will have more creativity, but the better way to deal with this is using nucleus sampling right. 
So what was our problem? Our problem was the following that if I look at the probability mass, here the first two tokens were actually accounting for as much as maybe the first five or six tokens accounting here, right? So instead of looking at k, maybe I should look at p, where p is the probability mass. So I draw a threshold on probability mass. I say up to the token which accounts for 60% of the probability, I will take that. So in this case, maybe all of these will enter because maybe the sum of these is 0.6. In this case, maybe only these two will enter because the sum of these is 0.6, right? So now instead of looking at a value of k, if I look at the probability mass, give me all those tokens which account for 60% of the probability mass and I will randomly sample from that instead of having a fixed value of k. So now both these cases can be taken off care of even if it is a flat distribution. In that case, you want more tokens to come in. So it is a flat distribution. So each of those values would be smaller and hence if you want to reach up to 0 0.6, maybe you will have to take 5 or 6 tokens. If it is a peaky distribution, then the top one or two guys may itself account for 0 0.6 and you are okay with taking them because they already have a high probability, right? So that is what uh, top P or nucleus sampling does. The rest of the procedure remains same, right? So you just have a dynamic value of K now. Sort the probabilities in descending order, set a value for the parameter p between 0 to 1 as I was taking the example of p is equal to 0.6, sum the probabilities of tokens starting from the top, right? So keep summing up and whenever you reach 0.6, you draw the line there, right? You draw the line there. So those are the tokens that you are going to consider and depending on the nature of the distribution, more or less tokens will get added, right? And now the rest of the process remains the same. In this case, only two tokens got added. So, you are going to normalize that. So, maybe uh, hot occupies 0 to 0 0.8 and cooling occupies uh, 0.8 to 1, right? Now, you will do the RAND and sample from this. In this case, maybe 6 tokens came in and let us for the sake of simplicity assume the first token takes 0 0.2 and then the remaining uh, 5 takes a uh, 0.16, right? Or just complete the sum to or maybe just, uh, okay, how many are there? Uh, I said 6 tokens are there, right? Yeah, okay. So maybe the first guy takes 0.4 and the remaining ones are all suppose 0.1 each, right? So this space from 0 to 0.4 belongs to the first token, 0.4 to 0.5 belongs to the second token, 0.5 to 0.6 belongs to the second, third token and so on, right? Now again, you will generate a rand and depending on the number that it generates, suppose it generates 0.72, you will take the appropriate token from Right? So, the process remains the same, it is just how many tokens you are considering and that you are deciding based on a threshold P. Yeah. So, for the uh, top left distribution, we will sample from the to tokens thought, new, had, saw, said because that is the tokens which account for 0 0.6 and for the bottom distribution, we will only sample from hot and cooling because those are the tokens which account for 0 0.6, okay. Yeah, so that is that's all about uh, decoding strategies. We looked at dec uh, deterministic strategies and stochastic strategies and it should be clear that stochastic strategies make sure that your, while your transformer has a deterministic computation, at the end you are adding a sampling uh, function which will make sure that you are sampling different tokens at every time and hence generating different sequences for the same given input, okay. So that is all. I will end this here and in the next lecture, we will start looking at encoder only models. So, we looked at decoder only models which is GPT and with that we looked at decoding strategies also. Now, we will look at encoder only models and with that we will look at tokenizers, right? So, we have paired it up as one family of models and one generic concept, right? So, the family of models that we did in this uh, lecture was decoder only models and the generic concept was decoding strategies which applies to all families. Now, the family that we will look in the next lecture is encoder only models. And the generic stuff that we will cover is tokenizers, which applies to all families, okay? Uh, okay, so I will end here and see you next.